Thank you for the excellent presentations of Dr. Sunita and Dr. Novero. Now I would like to call on uh, if Dr. Sunita has not uh, yet logged in, uh, our uh, President-elect and uh, co-chair of our SIG on reproductive surgery, Professor T.C. Liu, to speak on behalf of Dr. Sunita as a rebuttal for mandatory hysteroscopy prior to IVF. Professor T.C. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm stepping in for Dr. Sunita, and I've listened to two excellent debate, two excellent arguments for this rather controversial topic. So uh, my understanding is whether hysteroscopy should be routine mandatory before IVF. I want to like to make a couple of statements. First of all, I think before IVF, it is very important, always necessary to check the uterine cavity. We don't want to put in embryos in the uterine cavity without knowing that it is normal. Otherwise, we are wasting embryos. And if the patient knows subsequently that the, the endometrium and the mutual cavity is not right, then they could get very disappointed and they can get upset. So the question is, we should always have some form of assessment of the uterine cavity, no doubt, everybody. Does. The second point I want to make is, what is the best, what is the gold standard method of assessing the uterine cavity? I think nearly always we would say the hysteroscopy is the gold standard. Some people may say, well, 3D saline sonography is almost as good as a hysteroscopy. But no one is saying that the hysteroscopy is inferior to other methods. So therefore, the question is, why not do a hysteroscopy as a routine to ensure that the intrauterine cavity is indeed normal? The third point I'd like to make is, yes, we have uh, some terminology in the literature saying that it's a screening hysteroscopy. I don't like the word screening hysteroscopy. I think a screening ultrasound is better because ultrasound screens a certain type of pathology and the diagnosis later on is confirmed by hysteroscopy. So the hysteroscopy is really a, a diagnostic uh, method, give you confidence, give yes or no, whether it's normal or not. And as Dr. Sanita pointed out, it could give you opportunity to do a C and treat and uh, getting biopsies for assessment if, if needed. So there are a number of advantages. The question though is why are we against hysteroscopy as a routine before IVF, as a mandatory method? Why? Is it for financial reason? Is it because it's more expensive than ultrasound? Or is it because the statistical club that uh, say we have not yet shown that uh, it can significantly improve the outcome? But to me, nobody is saying that hysteroscopy would make the alive birth rate lower. Maybe half of the literature would say, yes, it could improve it, perhaps some bias. The other half might say, no, it doesn't improve, it improve. but no one say it is actually worse. So there must be a reason why we are not recommending hysteroscopy as a mandatory, maybe for financial reason. But I think in due course, when we can do more and more office procedures, when we can make the cost even lower, when more people are, are comfortable in doing it, and when the expectation of patients are getting higher, when they want to know for sure there is no intrauterine pathology, perhaps we will soon be moving towards a mandatory hysteroscopy prior to IVF. I know it's not yet there, but I think in theory, the logic is, yes, we should be moving towards doing more hysteroscopy before IVF. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor TC. That's a very, very strong position and spoken with conviction. I'll be interested in uh, listening to the con, uh, the rebuttal of Dr. Virgilio Novero. Dr. Sir Joy. Dr. Novero. Let me just share my rebuttal slides. Okay, I'll go straight to the rebuttal. Summary point one is that in the court of science and medicine, you have to rely on best evidence with least question of bias. And as I said, we should only rely on those with RCTs or meta-analysis with RCTs because others have doubt on the quality of their findings. When you do your PubMed, you have 299 articles. There are only four articles that are relevant 
for the debate, and I have already mentioned that. The acceptable studies are only the Kamath, the Spedio study, and the Pordier study, which all of these have some, um, some, only these have some quality of evidence that should be considered because they are RCTs. And again, if you go through them, many of them contain some studies which have some question of bias. And it's only the Smith study, which has, which is the highest quality of evidence. Going back, the, Swiss, the Smith study, which was mentioned by my protagonist, Dr. Sinita, mentioned it was only about cost, but it is not. It also has a live birth rate being compared and it was really equal in the two groups and they did not recommend routine hysteroscopy. The Kamath study in general found no high quality evidence in all. So they did not support routine hysteroscopy. And the other two meta-analyses, including the Pundir study of 2014, which was brought up by my protagonist, uh, also did mention that there was there is a need for robust high quality evidence before they could routine, routinely recommend hysteroscopy. Same for the Despicio Sardo study. Again, we are not debating the patients where we know there is a, a potential lesion. Those have to undergo hysteroscopy. What we are debating about are the patients who do not have anything in their history, in their ultrasound, in their symptoms that suggest they should undergo hysteroscopy. And we are making them undergo hysteroscopy. As I said, the ICMART said, we already do 2.7 million IVF cases a year. And are we going to routinely perform hysteroscopy in those who are not indicated? Current guidelines do not advocate the routine use of screening hysteroscopy in the initial IVF workup for all. The rebuttal issues, we already talked about the Smith study, which was not only about cost, but also about live birth rate. The Pordier study, which also included among it, it uh, the, the meta-analysis, non-randomized uh, controlled trials. And the cow study, which was also heavily uh, mentioned in the presentation, is not a meta-analysis of first IVF. It is a meta-analysis of RVRIF, meaning they already underwent IVF. So it's not first IVF. So the recommendation should be Routine hysteroscopy should not be routinely performed in patients for their first IVF. They may be performed in patients undergoing their first IVF if with suspected uterine lesions based on history, symptoms, and ultrasound findings. And unindicated hysteroscopy for first IVF should only be recommended when there is good robust evidence of benefit, which until now is lacking. I will repeat what we mentioned we should spare the huge majority who will be made to undergo unnecessary hysteroscopy without indication. We should just probably expand the indicated list by meticulous history taking for risk factors or improve ultrasound for better machines, better training. And I would like to add and agree to the addition of Dr. Herbert in the previous lecture that we may probably add unexplained infertility in this indicated patients for hysteroscopy before IVF. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Navarro. Certainly, this is shaping up to be a very interesting and heated debate. I'd like to ask two questions each for each of your the protagonists. And Dr. TC, thank you for stepping in on behalf of Dr. Sunita. Uh, if you would pref uh, proceed with an uh, hysteroscopy, prior to an IVF procedure, uh, what would you prefer? You would do the procedure first prior to the uh, ovum pickup or after ovum pickup and prior to a frozen embryo transfer? For me, I would say I would do it before any embryo transfer because I think the point is that if there is any pathology, I can deal with it before embryo transfer. So it's not after uh, failing first transfer or failing second transfer, or whether it's fresh or, or, or frozen. So I would do it well before. And uh, there's a question in the chat box. Uh, in the absence of uterine structural 
lesions on saline infusionography, will hysteroscopy uh, be uh, still indicated? So you have an ISIS, will you still proceed with the, that, that turns out to negative, will you still proceed with the hysteroscopy? Um, well, as I mentioned, the hysteroscopy is a diagnostic, it's a gold standard. It confirms it yes and no, black and white, 100% or no. Whereas the ultrasound is a screening tool. We know screening tool has got its limitations. So this is why we say hysteroscopy is the gold standard. It's the best. Nothing is better than hysteroscopy. So I think from that point of view, hysteroscopy really has an edge over other screening methods. I think if hysteroscopy can be made more easily, can be done more easily uh, than at, at a lower cost, I think the uptake will be more. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Professor T. C. Lee. Two questions for Dr. Novero. One question is the Smiths and the Pondier study, as well as other health technology assessment uh, studies, really emphasize the fact that cost is a primary consideration in doing this hysteroscopy screening. Should hysteroscopy be as uh, easily accessible as well as as cheap as a routine transvaginal ultrasound? Will you still prescribe it to the patient prior to an IVF? Well, I'll have to take on the position of science rather than economics, Ange. Uh, all, the all the studies that I've mentioned are all about outcome, not about uh, cost. So if we talk about outcome, then there does not seem to be any advantage of doing routine hysteroscopy for first IVFs without ultrasound or historical uh, suspect for intrauterine lesions. Last question, Dr. Novero. Uh, if you have a patient where cost is not a consideration, neither is convenience, and is about to undergo an IVF procedure, okay, uh, you know our, the profile of IVF patients, they want to optimize their attempts and requests you, first IVF, to do the procedure. Will you dissuade given the strength of your evidence or would you agree? I will tell them what is the existing evidence and if they will still insist on doing a hysteroscopy, regardless of the evidence, then I'd be over, I might have to be overridden by their decision. I will agree to that. But they will have to agree that there is no uh, existing evidence. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Uh, we have a chat. Oh, Dr. Novero, Dr. Delphine Tan has a comment. Uh, Dr. Novera has contradicted himself by including unexplained infertility in the indications for pre-IVF hysteroscopy. All patients for IVF have unexplained infertility if there are no indications for hysteroscopy. Any comments, Dr. Novero? On the other hand, that's exactly the argument of Dr. Herbert in his presentation. Uh, in the first presentation this, this afternoon, he said that because in the routine evaluation for us unexplained infertility, hysteroscopy is not included, then you miss certain, you are able to miss certain lesions. So because it's unexplained, it should be included in the routine evaluation before you should be considered as unexplained infertility. Okay, thank you. So uh, any more comments or questions? I think that will be it. Uh, and we'd like to ask the audience again to let us, uh, to vote on uh, this uh, very interesting uh, proposition that hysteroscopy should be mandatory before an IVF procedure. So Yanni, can we flash the poll? Hysteroscopy is mandatory before IVF for and against. So I cannot vote, I am a panelist. <laughs> I would like to vote, <laughs> but uh, we would like to give the audience some time, about a minute to answer. And certainly the points of each side are very strong, very impressive uh, propositions on both sides. 
although Dr. Novero, patient autonomy, if the patient insists, you know, <laughs> sometimes they are very well read and they would insist. So that's something that we have to consider as well. So a few seconds more. Okay, so we end the poll. Wow, Dr. Novero, you seem to be very, very convincing. 62% uh, against mandatory IVF and four, 38%. To give the audience, uh, refre uh, to refresh the memory of the audience, our initial poll was 53% said mandatory. Now it was reduced to 38. Regarding the against, that it has to be selective. Before it was 47%, now 62% became uh, were, uh, changed their position and now are against hysteroscopy as mandatory procedure before IVF. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations, Professor Sunita. Congratulations, Professor TC. And above all, congratulations, Dr. Virgilio Novero for a very, very convincing argument. Thank you very much. And before we end this webinar, I'd like to call the president-elect of the Aspire, uh, Professor Tin Chu Lee of the Chinese University of Hong Kong to give our closing remarks. Professor. Thank you. First of all, congratulations to Joy for the splendid performance. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed the webinar. I hope you've all done it as much as I do. I would like to thank all the speakers for their splendid performance and the moderator for their wonderful contribution. I also would like to say Aspire is privileged to have the chance to work with the two collaborating societies from Philippines and from Indonesia. And together we have made it a success, definitely. And I'd like to thank you all for your participation. Many, many thanks indeed. And see you all in due course. <laughs>